I'm going to start with Peter. Tell me, why was Einstein interested in this particular problem, and what did he have to say about it? Well, in some ways, the history of modern physics, all the way back to Descartes and Galileo, has been about unification. In fact, the story of the unification of physics is, in essence, the story of what we want from our understanding of the physical world. Descartes thought you could get rid of all those absurd categories of the neo-Aristotelians, get rid of talking about fundamental wetness and dryness and hardness and softness and reduce everything to just matter hitting matter locally. And Newton said, that's all very well to try to get rid of long distance forces, but what we really need is something fundamentally different, a mathematical law that connected the third leg of an ant to the moons of Jupiter. Everything, every speck of matter in the world is connected to every other speck by the same law, and that that would unify things, not Descartes' picture. By the time you got to Einstein at the beginning of the 20th century, he had a very different conception of unity yet again. Every one of his papers, of his great papers, begins by saying, not there's something wrong with experiment, not by saying there's something wrong with mathematics and it's been used in the theory, but by saying there's an asymmetry in, nature, in the way we understand nature that's not present in nature itself. And he said, when you look at a magnet and approaching a coil, as far as the world's concerned, there's no difference between whether you take the point of view of the magnet or the coil, and we ought to build our physics around that, not on some idea that we have about which is basic and which is not. When he looked at li liquids like water, he saw the conflict between our picture of matter is made of atoms and that which is fluid and continuous, and he said, that's no good. We need to be able to bring these two together. When he looked at light, he said, you think of light as both a particle in certain respects and the way it behaves and a wave in certain respects. It has to be that we take both of these into account and begin to think about unifying them. This drove him throughout his career, a sense that he had to have something that could bring the world of understanding together to parallel the symmetries that really were out there. One time somebody asked him, how come, Professor Einstein, you have no shampoo and only one bar of soap? And he said, two kinds of soap, that's one too many. <laughs> he wanted the world, to ref the world of science to reflect the symmetry of nature itself. And the world that he built, the world of that begins with him to develop quantum theory and to develop relativity theory, created the conditions under which the questions that we're going to be talking about here today spring. That is to say, these two foundational pillars that were built, quantum mechanics and gravity, have to come together. We can't have a world in which these two things remain in contradiction. So he said, and he devoted much of the rest of his life to trying to figure that out somewhat unsuccessfully from our perspective now, but in a sense, that sets up the problem that we have today, which is how do we join these two pillars that Einstein set up? How do we find the unity that he searched for all his life but didn't quite find?